In 1961, the first ever commercial robot joined the ranks of General Motors. This robot, called the Unimate, was used to lift exceptionally hot pieces of metal that would have otherwise been particularly dangerous to its human inferiors. By modern standards, of course, this device was extremely basic. Although it cost about $35,000, a little more than $200,000 in today's money, it was essentially just a lifting arm pre-programmed with a repeating set of instructions not dissimilar to the Lego Mindstorm kits that came out in the early 2000s, only a bit bigger. A lot bigger. Nevertheless, the fact that it actually worked paved the way for far more advanced versions and the age of robotics was born. Nowadays, robots are everywhere, from Apple's Daisy, the metaphorical great-great-great-grandchild of the Unimate, designed to completely disassemble mobile phones for more effective recycling, through to search and rescue robots, and even automated vacuum cleaners and lawnmowers, which I'm currently trying to persuade my wife to buy. However, as impressive as all of these undoubtedly are, the best is yet to come. So please join us as we take a look at some of the awesome robots robots of the near future. Whether you love him or you hate him, Elon Musk, or at least his money, has facilitated quite a few changes within the tech industry over the last 20 years or so. Some of these ideas, such as his contributions to PayPal, self-driving cars, global internet connectivity, and space exploration have gone pretty well. Others, such as Hyperloop, Zip2, and the Solyndra investment, not so much. Another one of his seemingly successful projects, which has seen a lot of news coverage recently, is Tesla's Optimus robot. Described on their website as, quote, a general-purpose, bipedal, humanoid robot, capable of performing tasks that are unsafe, repetitive, or boring. Optimus, theoretically at least, really could be the robot that humanity has been waiting for for over a hundred years. Speaking at the We Robot event, Musk told the crowd, It will be able to do anything you want. It can be a teacher, babysit your kids, walk your dog, mow your lawn, get your groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks, whatever you can think of. If the robot is in fact capable of doing all of those things, then it really does have the potential to change the world. Given that Musk is claiming these will be available for purchase by the general public at some point in 2026, we might not have too long to wait. But how good are these robots really? Is it actually possible that purchasing just one of these devices will mean you never have to tidy your house, go to the shop at midnight for emergency ice cream, or change your baby's nappy, or diaper if you're feeling particularly American ever again? If you were to watch Tesla's CyberCab events, in which many of the new robots took part, you might very well believe that Optimus is almost ready to function out in the wild. During the four-hour event, quite a few of these robots demonstrated skills such as pouring and serving drinks, dancing, and holding spontaneous conversations with members of the public. The whole event went very smoothly indeed, perhaps even a little too smoothly. According to Tesla, throughout the entire event, there was only one instance of a robot getting into trouble. This occurred when a lady's bag got caught on a robot's hand, unbalancing it to such a degree that it fell to the ground. If all the robots had been operating entirely autonomously throughout the event, this would have been an incredible achievement. However, they weren't. Some of them were, but the majority were either being remotely operated from behind the scenes, or at the very least had someone standing by to take over should something go wrong, much like an autonomous vehicle. Some people might refer to this as misleading behavior on Tesla's part. However, the truth is that for these robots to function effectively out in the wild, events like this are entirely necessary to train the neural networks that run them. Take, for example, the incident with the bag. As pointed out on the YouTube channel, The Tesla Space, until this event, the Optimus robots had only ever interacted with trained professionals who knew what they were doing. The robot had no idea that getting its hand caught in the strap of a bag could be dangerous, and therefore it took no steps to avoid it. Crucially, however, it knows that now. Not only that, but every other Optimus robot also knows it. In much the same way that Tesla's autopilot has exponentially improved with the influx of real-world information, the robots will also improve as they're exposed to more scenarios. Although most experts in the field of robotics seem to think that Musk's projected release dates are, shall we say, a little optimistic, it is possible that, assuming you have a spare twenty dollars or $30,000 to spend on a robot, the dream could become a reality by the end of the decade. As one former Tesla employee told us, it is a matter of when, not a matter of if. It cannot possibly have escaped your notice that microplastics are a significant problem these days. Due to human beings becoming reliant on many, many single-use disposable plastic items, our lack of knowledge about just how harmful these items were to the environment when they were first invented and the painfully slow rate at which acceptable alternatives are being developed, it's become genuinely difficult to find areas of our planet that remain free of microplastics. For example, a study conducted in 2020 found microplastics in the Mariana Trench, the Tibetan Plateau, 
and even at the top of Mount Everest. They are, in short, everywhere. But you may be wondering, well, that's bad news. What can we do about it? Researchers in China have come up with an interesting little robot that could prove to be rather helpful. This tiny, self-propelled, fish-like device can swim around in water and absorb microplastics. Not only that, but the layered graphene-based polymer from which the robot is constructed has the ability to self-heal with up to 89% efficiency. At the moment, these tiny robots suffer from some fairly severe limitations. Due to the fact that they are controlled and propelled by a laser operating very close to the infrared spectrum, they can only be used at close range and in shallow water. However, future iterations of the device will be able to operate underwater with a much greater range, enabling them to not only assist with cleanup, but also provide real-time information on contamination levels in any given area. According to their creator, quote, it is expected that in the future we can directly put these fish into the ocean, collect and analyze the composition of microplastics in the water, and then guide the design of the processing and production of our plastic products, blocking the generation of microplastics at the source. Although perhaps not the most exciting piece of robotic technology under construction, this device could potentially become an invaluable tool in the fight against plastic pollution. If you ask anybody who has ever worked in construction, stacked shelves, or even simply moved house how much fun repeatedly lifting and carrying heavy items actually is, chances are you'll receive some variation of the answer, it is not fun at all. But imagine if there were a device that could not only do the majority of the hard work for you, but also allow you to spend your work days stomping around in a huge Iron Man style suit. That would make it a lot cooler. As you may have already guessed, such a thing does exist. Sort of. It's called the Guardian XO. So what is it and what could it do? Well, according to the maker's website, the Sarkos Guardian XO is a 24 degrees of freedom, a full body robotic exoskeleton. While wearing it, a human can lift 200 pounds, 90 kilos, or while feeling like they're lifting just 10 pounds or 4.5 kilos. In fact, it can do even better than that. The Guardian XO can actually make it feel like you're lifting nothing at all. However, according to Ben Wolf, the CEO of Sarkos, carrying something that weighs 200 pounds and having it feel like it weighs nothing can be disconcerting and even dangerous. After all, it still weighs 200 pounds, whether you can feel it or not. For example, if you were to stop abruptly while carrying such a load, it would still have significant forward momentum with all the potential problems that that can cause. Although operating such a machine might sound like the kind of thing that requires hundreds of hours of training, it doesn't. Apparently, all you have to do is strap yourself in and the robot's sensors will immediately start copying the movements of your limbs. The thing is, all of this was available four years ago. The future promises to be even more impressive. As Sarkos moves into the world of artificial intelligence, it's been suggested that through the use of advanced AI learning models, similar devices will be developed that are faster, safer, and even more intuitive. To give an idea of just how revolutionary this could be, exoskeletonreport.com has this to say after Sarkos was awarded a development contract by the Air Force to create smart, dexterous robotic systems with artificial intelligence. Quote, a powered exoskeleton's purpose is to combine human ingenuity, instincts, and reflexes with the endurance, strength, and tenacity of a robotic system. However, for a powered exoskeleton, the onboard motors and controllers have to guess what the user is attempting to do. In most cases, such as standing or walking, that can be relatively simple. However, a sudden event like a slip or a quick jerk to avoid an obstacle can result in complicated body movements by the user. This is further compounded by the complexity of the Guardian XO, which accounts for the force and inertia of the exoskeleton. AI could be instrumental not in replacing the user, but in making powered exoskeletons easier and more intuitive to operate. So to cut through the fluff, the implication is that with AI integration, powered exoskeletons will be able to determine exactly what the user is trying to do and adjust their movements accordingly, rather than having to react to each individual motion in real time. Taking this further, with camera integration, uh, your power suit could help assess each lift in advance and even recommend the safest or most efficient way to get the job done. Although the Guardian XO and similar robots are primarily aimed at industrial markets, construction sites, warehouses, etc., there's no reason why they couldn't be utilized in other fields. The care industry, for example, is both notoriously understaffed and physically demanding. A modified version of the Guardian XO could allow one person to do the work of two or three people when it comes to lifting patients or heavy equipment. Additionally, with the right AI models, it could provide on-the-job training. Potential applications are almost limitless. Insects, bees in particular, are essential to our survival as a species. Although for most people, interactions with bees are limited to wafting them out of an open window during summer or occasionally getting stung at a picnic, the truth is that without bees, we would all be very, very hungry. 
bees are responsible for the majority of pollination of plants that require it across the planet. Unfortunately, though, the bees are dying. Explaining why this is happening would require an entire video of its own, but suffice it to say that without them, we're going to be in serious trouble. One of the many attempts to solve this problem is the Robo Bee, and it is by far the coolest robot that we've covered today. There are quite a few examples of robotic insects that can walk, but Robo Bees, about the size of a human fingernail and weighing slightly less than one tenth of a gram, can fly. While you might expect nothing less from an artificial bee, making it happen is incredibly challenging. So, how is it achieved? As is increasingly the case these days, the answer was found in nature. Specifically, robotics engineers at Harvard carefully studied a particular type of fly and were eventually able to reverse engineer its muscles, wing patterns, and flight mechanics, allowing them to replicate its abilities. Almost every component that goes into these tiny robots is a marvel of engineering. According to Harvard's website, quote, the tiny robots flap their wings using piezoelectric actuators, strips of ceramic that expand and contract when an electric field is applied. This not only allows the wings to flap more than 100 times every second, but also enables the prototype bots to take off vertically fly in any direction and even hover. There's even a modified version that can swim underwater, surface, and then fly away. At the moment, these robots are still very much in the development stage and are incapable of operating outside of laboratory conditions. However, they are already capable of functioning both individually and part of a swarm, which could have many uses beyond artificial pollination further down the line. For example, imagine a search and rescue scenario. A hike has gone missing in Yellowstone National Park. They've been missing for quite some time, and there's a vast amount of ground to cover as quickly as possible. Now imagine how much more efficient the search would be if you could arrive with a crate containing 2,000 artificial bees, release them into the air, and have every single one report back to a central location. Currently, the two main factors impeding progress are battery life and computing power. However, as these technologies improve rapidly year by year, it's not unrealistic to think that these robots or something similar could be available within the next decade. In fact, a proof of concept already exists. Researchers at the University of Maryland have developed a prototype capable of carrying out all the polluting functions of a bee. However, because it is currently the size of a hummingbird, it can only be used on larger plants like sunflowers. As part of the scaling down process, Chahat Singh, the leader of the project, has proposed a novel idea to greatly reduce the amount of battery power required. Instead of each individual bee flying from plant to plant, they would travel inside a much larger drone. This mother drone would then release the bees onto whatever needs to be pollinated, say an apple tree in an orchard, then collect them and transport them to the next location once the task is complete. Not only would this system require less power, but the bees could also recharge inside the carrier while in transit. Assuming a fast enough communication link could be established, all the necessary computations could be carried out on board the mother drone allowing the internal systems of each individual bee to be scaled down even further. As mentioned earlier, these robots are still a long way from being released autonomously into the wild. However, with bee populations continuing to decline around the world, these robotic bees could one day help carry more than just pollen. They could carry the future of agriculture itself. Thank you for watching.